The Courage to Be Disliked is a book that genuinely changed my life in a year where so much was changing already. I moved from London to Glasgow alone and had to basically start from scratch again. I had to move in Glasgow again because my contract was only six months when I initially moved and I was starting a new apprenticeship where I also knew no one who I was working with. All that aside, let's delve into the book itself and what it tells us. The Courage to Be Disliked is a book by, I hope I'm not butchering the pronunciations, but Ichiro Kishimi and Fumitake Koga, two Japanese philosophers and writers that take the philosophy of a German guy named Adler and try dumb it down into a conversation between a young person with problems and a philosopher who's not young, but has all these brilliant stories and ideas about how to fix this young person's problem. Now, if you are gonna read this, you are gonna be hit with a lot of uh, skepticism at first because it says a lot of things where you're just like, I don't know about that. It doesn't make sense to me. But in theory, what the book says again and again is all problems are interpersonal relationship problems. Now I know what you're saying. It doesn't add up. How is my plant dying a problem with some other person? It's not actually what it's saying. What it's saying is most of your actual problems that you spend the most time thinking about can probably be solved if you fix the relationships surrounding them. For example, if you have issues at work, it might have to do with a co-worker or your boss, or if you have issues at school, it might have to do with your teachers or your friends or something like that. It's not actually about if your table breaks, that was someone else's fault because it's an interpersonal relationship problem. I just forgot to say words there. But yeah, the book follows a young person who is struggling with social anxiety and just doesn't know what to do with their life. They have no direction, essentially. And just like many of us, they constantly feel overwhelmed, uh, tired, and just don't have fun doing their daily activities. One day, this person meets a wise philosopher who introduces him to Adler's philosophy, who believed that our relationships with others and the world around us ultimately define our personalities, the way we view the world, and just our happiness overall. Throughout the course of the books, the phrase or problems or interpersonal relationship problems are repeated again and again. If you're watching this video after already reading the book, you kind of get where I'm coming from. It starts to make more sense with each example and each day and each time they meet in the story for this case. And the story is just a way to simplify and make us understand what they're talking about more. Uh, it is a lot of information and the dialogue really, really helps you break it down between this is a thing and this is the other thing. Whereas uh, if it was just one big chunk of text, I don't think I would have read it or enjoyed it. So there's that. Back to the story. Uh, the philosopher guides this young person through Adler's philosophy, telling him that our thoughts and feelings aren't determined by some external factors but they're actually quite internal and they're pretty much just formed by our own beliefs in our own head. Now, when I was first reading this, I was doing it on Audible, listening to it, uh, basically. And I started listening to it on a morning where it was cold, rainy outside, and I just didn't want to do anything. And about five, six minutes in, this thing had got me out of bed and walking to the gym in the rain. It doesn't take very long for the book to delve into some serious issues. So be prepared. With newfound understanding and by setting small goals, this young person slowly starts to take control of their own life again, kind of like me with going to the gym in the mornings which i've now done 13 out of 15 or 16 days this month uh, and that's just this month it's helped me since i've started reading it in general but over time not just the person in the book but you also start to embrace the challenge kind of and stop giving into the fear of everyday life whatever you're scared of doing and stuff like that just like talking to a stranger maybe or like doing things that you're like i don't know if i should do it alone uh, and just doing it and as you read this book more and as the young person in the book starts to understand adler's philosophy more they become more and more self-assured and fulfilled essentially at this point in my life uh, i think it was either late november or december i had not made many videos um and i'm someone who used to make four videos a day but that doesn't mean that's what i am that's one of the things i do but in the end it gave me this sense of fulfillment that i haven't had in a long time without even actually doing as much stuff as i thought i would need to do by the end of this book the young person breaks free from self expectations and lives life as themselves for the first time in seemingly forever despite potential criticism and potential judgment from others it doesn't really matter the person in the end isn't that overwhelmed anymore or filmed with anxiety but they start to appreciate the little things and live a life that they actually enjoy living. They're filled with a joy of, my script actually says they're filled with uh, purpose and joy instead. That just didn't sound right when I said that aloud. But in the end, the message that you will take away from it is probably that to be truly happy, you have to be in a situation where you are useful to someone else and someone else is useful to you because the thing that actually probably gives you happiness is a sense of community feeling, which I know sounds so out of field considering all problems are interpersonal relationship problems is 
just paraphrased and repeated so many times throughout the book, but it does all make sense and I highly recommend reading it. In the end, the book basically gives you the framework to break free from social expectations. Embracing your own individuality, setting your own goals, following them, living a more happy, fulfilled life, and hopefully not being as restrained by fear and anxiety anymore. And to finish the video off, here's a couple quotes from the book. The only way to be truly happy is live the life you want to live. Life is a choice. You can choose to be happy or unhappy. The true essence of courage is to believe in yourself and live life according to your own beliefs. That's it from me. I'll see you next week. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, bye now.